بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين حبيبنا شفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وبعض السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So tonight you have in some kind of youth, youth program. Eh? All Empires has been a youth program. You just added this program. You just added this recording. Don't take off nothing. Eh? <coughs> so what is do? What it is do? You you just be here. Where is do? Nothing. It's come a youth program to do nothing. Bilal, we hiding. Come, go along the line with the young. So what you just do? I is, and then you go home, or you just stay for no, you know, what activity? So what? What you just? What you just do? One thing: basketball, football. Cricket, basketball, football, cricket, what again? Table tennis, volleyball. So, let us get food. We have food. MashaAllah. When I was, when I was earlier age in my community, um, I remember in, at, my, at your age, me and my friend, you know, we, we save up dollar twenty five cents one for long, and we buy a sheet of ply to make a table tennis board because that is all we could do. And we started to pay table tennis. We didn't know professional table tennis. And being a youth in that community, we were hammered for that in that culture. And we were shouted at, accused of dividing the Jamaat, accused of all sorts of things. You should. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> I let us pay a toll fee. Bilal, you just pay a little, a little money now, boy, to play. So when you want to play a game, you pass a little $20. For five minutes, I have this go. Fifteen dollars for what? An hour. So a little pay for nothing. <laughs> so who does play football and thing? Who, who is the footballers? Shall I be put up your hand? Eh? A star, a rising star. Oh, let us play football. Who does play football, boy? Right, mashallah. You play football? Yeah. So we just play bare feet. You just play with what? Tugs on. You just play with what? You play bare feet? On concrete? And you just play with shoes and thing? You just play with shoes? Who buy your shoes for you? Your mother? Who cook the food? Who just cook the food? You? Who? I just cook my food. You just cook noodles? Egg. Egg. So, it up. so you have food, people just cook all your food for you. Or you buy any ball or cricket bat or, or sponge ball or uh, what, what? What, what? What do you just buy? Bilal, what do you bring? Nothing. Benjamin, what do you buy? So all let us get food, all let us get the sporting equipment. Probably he's somewhere else. So everything is provided for you. And everything is provided for you. Everything is given to you. 
and everything is given to you, mashallah. And that is a great blessing from Allah. The thing is, if everything is given to you, then who shows appreciation for that? Who they say thank you? The people who are cooking the food for you, do you say the food tasted really good? Jazakumallah, really nice. Person who put the rock climbing thing, I see rock climbing on some kind of advertisement. You go to the person and say, Brother Jazakum Allah, really appreciate this. This is such a wonderful thing. Your mother who buy your shoes for you, do you thank your mother for it? Say, Mom, thank you very much. The clothes that you're wearing on, you buy it? You're walking? You're walking? The little rubbish you're picking up in your room is your business, boy. <laughs> and you trade it. The clothes that you're wearing on, who bought it for you? Your parents bought it for you. Do you thank them for buying mom? Thank you, dad. Thank you. There's some school going and start. You want money to spend in school. And who giving you the money? You have a money tree behind your house? No. Your mom and your dad works. Your dad probably works. And he gives you a little bit. Every day you have a little $20 day. Go on what it is where you get $5. And you get $20 now because, I mean, a Coke is what, like $7 now? And uh, yeah, you, Coke, a Coke is about $7. Huh? Try that number. Every day I see in school drinking Coke. Water makes him coke. Uh, Every day drinking coke. And about $7 for a coke. Diva. So, everything, everything is provided for you. But how much appreciation do we show for those things which are provided for us? When's the last time you thank your mothers? For the meal she prepared for you. When's the last time you thank your father for providing for the household? When is the last time you thank anybody for anything? And if we don't show appreciation for the things that people provide for us, how can we even thank Allah? You need to consider yourself extremely fortunate. Today you go to school. Your parents make sure you go to school. Do you know how many children today in the world who are deprived of schooling? How much? About 16 and? About 27? 33? Over a hundred million children around the world. And some of those who are going to school, if you see the tedious route that they have to take to go to school, you wouldn't go. Some of them have to cross a raging river. Some of them have to walk through snow for miles, walking through a track, uphill, downhill, all in the name of getting an education. Every day you get up, you get a meal. Lunchtime, you, get, you, you, you are privileged. You get what you want. You go in the kitchen and you see something that you don't like. I don't well, I ain't like that. You know. well, well, when your mother and father see you eating, they say, well, probably being here like that. Son, what will you like to get? Hmm. I feel into eat KFC. Oh, I, let me go buy three houses, son. Huh? You want a burger, you want some barbecue, you want some popcorn chicken. What do you have to eat tonight? Popcorn chicken and fries and pilau. It's pilau? I know that. Everybody's favorite. But 
thing is, you, you, you get up in the morning, you have a meal to eat. Lunchtime comes, you have a meal to eat. The, the afternoon comes, you have a meal to, to eat. How many starving children are there in the world? Anybody knows? I want to big people answer in here, you know. One million? Oh, you know, start a count. There are over 200 million starving children in this world. Over 200 million. Not, not 100,000, you know. Not 200,000, you know. Over 200 million starving people in the world and people want to go on Mars and live. Can you imagine? I'm not talking about you ain't get what you want to eat and you're starving, you know. I ain't talking about that starving, you I'm speaking about you wake up in the morning and you have nothing to eat. The day comes and goes. The night comes upon you and they have nothing to eat. And they have to scavenge in the dustbins and in the garbage bins, in the garbage heaps, looking for something to eat. Let me ask you a question. Young people, eh? that boy if you had a wish a person comes to you and say I've given you one wish what is that one wish you will like fulfill one wish he's a talker and I don't know what going on with you hey have you, I know he likes to talk you're having a, a, somebody hurt your feelings, you're having a sad moment, well, you're going through a little. One wish. Katie, if you had one wish, he lost for words. One wish. All right, okay. Plenty of money. To grant any wish she wants. All right, okay, okay, okay. Take him the starving children food. Why, mashallah, very good. To go to Jannah, we talk about here, boy. So after the the war in Afghanistan, a British journalist on the border of Afghanistan between Afghanistan and Pakistan, he, he met this little girl, seven years old. A girl seven years old. And he asked this child, if you had one wish, if you had the desire for, for one thing, what it is you will wish for? That's one wish. What it is you will wish for? And you know, you ask, yeah, them fellas and I'm ashamed to answer, yeah? I, I, I'm telling you, these fellas and I'm ashamed to answer, they watch and smile like if they eat cake or something like that. You understand? But... Think about it seriously. If you have one wish that you would like to be fulfilled, what is that wish? So this British journalist asked this seven-year-old child, a girl, what is that one wish you would like fulfilled? She didn't say world peace. She didn't say I want all the wars in the world to stop. She didn't say I want all the sick people cured. She didn't talk about nothing bizarre out of, out of, out of this world. She said, if I had one desire that I would like fulfill, oh sir, all I want is a piece of bread to eat. That's it. How much times we show appreciation for the food that we eat? For the people who prepare the meals for us and the people who cook for us? How much times, husbands, how many times we thank our wives for preparing our meals babes the food is in real good girl is up is the best best cook best cook how many times we thank our wives for washing our clothes i'm telling you and today i speak about this house what can easy you know that is why you know sometimes you go home and your wife say boy you're real tired and you're like you tired what you do holy you just sit down watching tv and, and and all kind of thing you take one week 
and take the role of that caretaker of the house and you do everything in the house from see about the children to cobweb and sweep and mop and clean and cook and wash wares and wash clothes and everything in the house and let me know how you're feeling afterwards you think that's an easy job that's an easy job no one day it might be yeah, okay after two days they're like oh god my back breaking it's not easy how many times we thank our parents but you see we grew up in a culture we grew up in a culture that everything is given to us so we grew up with this culture and we feel that we are privileged for that we have to get that and we have to get this and parents bring up their children feeling privileged this is why a lot of young men and young women today are very lazy because we keep on giving and giving and giving and giving so we give them and we give them and we until they reach a point where they feel that they are privileged for this and privileged for that and then you are breeding a lazy nation they are not working if you say go and do that for me now oh god my back hurting man you know why you back hurting because you're spending whole night playing games online your back is such from sending a long hours yeah so everything that is given to us every single thing that is given to us it is a gift do we thank Allah why do you think the dua for waking up in the morning look at the dua for waking up in the morning Alhamdulillah Hamd is a form of showing gratitude all praises are for Allah. All thanks belongs to you, O oh Allah. Ahyana for reviving me. How many times people go to sleep in the night and they don't wake up in the morning to see the sunrise? How many people die in their sleep? So the first thing you say when you wake up in the morning, oh Allah, thank you for giving me back life. Do we thank Allah in the morning? Do we thank Allah when the evening comes? Do we thank Allah for the air that we breathe? When's the last time you really thank Allah for something? When is the last time we really thank Allah for something? You want to kill no sheep and goat? Well, if you want to do that, go right ahead. That's your business. But just to show appreciation for a gift or show appreciation for something that you were given, Allah gives you that without you even asking. How many things that you have in your life is you get and you didn't even ask for it look at your health how many children are sick in the world today some children are born into this world with all sorts of you know sicknesses and diseases they have a hole in their heart they have kidney failure they have a liver problem they are born with some rare blood disease they have some bone marrow disease they have some brain disorder they have a severe coronary diseases severe heart condition they are paralyzed some ways down. Their parents have abandoned them because and they are in the hospital. They've been living 16 years from their birth, 16 years, 17 years, 18 years. The only place they know as home is in the hospital. They are surrounded by the same people over and over. Their beds are the only beds. The four walls around them is their home. That's their life. Because their parents have abandoned them because they were born with some deformity. Or some deficiency in their bodies some sickness and they have been abandoned your parents abandon you did your parents abandon you no that is the only life they know so whilst you are running and walking there are those who are confined to a hospital bed there are those who are confined to a wheelchair there are those who have to use walking stick for the rest of their lives. But you, Alhamdulillah, Allah bless you with the ability, with strength, and you have strong bones. And you can run, and you can talk, and you can walk, and you have rock climbing, and you have volleyball, and cricket, and football, and all these things. And you enjoy that privilege. We enjoy that privilege. But we forget to say, Oh Allah, thank you. 
my dear brother, thank you. They don't want you to pay them, you know. They want you to give them no money, you know. But you see that simple thank you? It really hits deep in their hearts. That sense of showing appreciation, that sense of always being thankful, that sense of always showing gratitude for the things that you get, for the things that people give to you, for the things that you have. Allah Rabbil Isa, He says to Luqman alayhi salam, Anishkur lillah. Always be grateful to Allah. Always be grateful to Allah. Which means that you are walking around, living your life, and in your minds and hearts, you are always saying, Be thankful, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. So you hit a low point in your life, and usually when you hit a low point in your life, and a person say, but you still be grateful. Is that grateful for what? You see my condition? Watch what's happening to me. No, still be grateful because your situation could have been worse. So Luqman alayhi salam, his life was very profound. He walked around always thanking Allah. I mean, if you look at the life of, of the people of the past, they didn't have what you have. They didn't have no, they didn't have jobs in no office, AC office. They, they probably was, they had a few herd of animals. They, they, they had to uh, go and plant on the outside. They had no, you know, bandana. They had no sombrero to cover them from the sun. They had no fridge with cold water. They had no Coca-Cola, I know Monster. You feel a little droopy today, say drink a Monster. Gal boost. They're not nothing like that. They had no car with AC in it. They wanted to go from point A to point B. If they don't have a ride, they walk. They didn't have no Nike jogging shoes. They probably had a sandal in their foot. They didn't have no memory foam slippers and shoes. Think about their life compared to your life. And the life of Luqman Ali Sana was a life of gratitude. Allah says to him, Anishkurulillah, always be grateful. Always be thankful. And we need to always be thankful to Allah. We need to always be thankful to the people that Allah has placed in your life. The people whom Allah has placed in your life, they are there for a reason. Nothing in your life happens haphazardly. Everything is well orchestrated. Everything is well planned. Allah put you in a family. He gave you those parents. The food that you eat, Allah provided that for you. So be thankful. Be grateful for everything that you have. Because the day Allah takes it away from you, what will be your situation? Then you go winch and whine and go run around crying on everybody's shoulder you meet. Isn't that so? We cry. So when we hit a low point in our lives, we whinge and we whine and we cry. And you complain. And the situation is like this. And boy, if I tell you, oh God, it takes real rough with me. Think about the man who is sleeping under a tree. Think about the man who is sleeping in a cardboard box. Think about the man who is sleeping on a pavement. Think about the man who doesn't have a roof over his head. Think about the man who is sleeping on the concrete, on the pavement, and he doesn't have that nice soft cushy bed that you sleep in on when the night comes? He doesn't have that. He covers with a cardboard. You know, you, you drive around Trinidad, and you're going to the beach, and once you're going to the beach, you're busy on your, 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 um, your, your phone. I got beat out again before I reach there. But you know when you're driving around, it's good to look at the environment. Just, you're driving through Port of Spain, just take a look around and see what's going on. You will see people sleeping on the side of the road. You will see people covered in a cardboard box. 
You will see people just with a bag on their back just walking around. They are absolutely homeless. There are hundreds of millions of orphans in the world. Hundreds of millions of homeless people. They don't, when the night comes, they don't have a roof over their head. When the rain falls, they are what? When the snow falls, they are cold. When the place is blistering hot, they are in the heat. Everything that you have, Allah has given to you, it is a privilege which you get. And we need to be grateful for everything, no matter how small it is. We need to be grateful to Allah under all situations. The day we become ungrateful for the things which Allah has given to us, the day we become ungrateful to those who provide for us, a meal for us, give us clothing, and we become ungrateful, we show that level of ingratitude. Allah will take it away from us just to teach you a lesson. So a man who, you know the Prophet Sallallahu he says, take care of five things before five things happen. He said, take care of your health before sickness comes. So today we take our health for granted. We take our bodies for granted. And you find people pushing all kinds of stupidness up their nose and, and using all sorts of nonsense and causing harm to their bodies. Young men, young women, and when they fall chronically ill, go and tell Hafiz Abdullah to come and read some Quran for me now. You know, in my village, this, this young man, you're always going out and giving him dawah, always giving him dawah, always giving him dawah, always visiting the home. We had the days when we would go out and, you know, meet different homes. And he climbed up a coconut tree and he fell along the coconut tree and he broke his spine. Or some part of his back he broke. So every day we will go and we read Quran by the house and read Quran by the house and the parents will be crying and say, oh God, my son paralyzed. And Alhamdulillah, he recovered good. He recovered so good. He used to play plenty of football and cricket and all. He was very active. He became very active. He became very good, actively involved in everything. But he became very ungrateful. When he was bedridden and he was in a cast from his neck to mid, mid leg, mid thigh area, he was in a cast. His whole body was in a cast, except for his legs and his hands. And he will go and he will lie in his bed and we will go to them and he will cry and he talks, say, make do for me, please make do for me. When he recovered, he lost the direction for the masjid. When he recovered, he forgot about the masjid and the azan will be called and he's living about three houses away from the masjid. And every day he will pass it from the masjid up and down and three, four times he's passing. And he forgot about Allah. And he forgot about, forgot about Allah's favors upon him. He forgot about his health. If he was paralyzed, you think his situation would have been the same or he would have become more pious? What do you think? Junior, what do you think? He would have been more praying. And then he would have said, by I wish I could have stand up and pray, you know. Well, hey, look at it. Allah gave you back your health. But go ahead and stand up and pray. So the man who is bedridden, he wish he could sit and pray. And the man who is confined to a wheelchair, he wish he could stand and pray. But if Allah gives you back your health, would you stand and pray? Or would you turn your backs and become ungrateful? So the Prophet he says, take care of your health. Before sickness come, because when sickness comes upon you, you will make the world of promises. But Allah knows your words are hollow. It has no soul in it. It's blank. It's a waste of time. You're just speaking words. You're just saying something emotionally. You're speaking out of emotion, but you really don't mean it. Every favor which Allah has given to us. You know, this famous in Surah, Surah uh, Rahman, Allah says, <clears throat> You know what Allah is? What's the meaning of it? You. Go ahead, don't be shy. Come on, boy. 
Allah says, Fabi ayi ala irabbikuma tukadhiban. Which is it of the favors? It's plural. Which of the favors? Not favor. Eh? How much of Allah's favors will you deny? So how much of Allah's favors is upon us? You remember the two years of the lockdown? The pandemic thing? And five people was allowing in masjid. People was troops and fuming, vexing and quarreling. And they had an out, outrage amongst the Muslim communities. Five people, but you know, your masjid was being watched. You understand? Think about it. Is Ramadan a favor upon us? Is Ramadan a favor? So Allah says, Fabi ayi ala irabbikuma tukadhiran. Which is it of the favors of your Lord will you deny? See, everything happens for a reason. Prior to that, when Ramadan will come to us, and Allah bless us to see the blessed month of Ramadan, how much people really showed that respect and honor the month to the level the way the month is supposed to be respected and honored ramadan time come you have people still watching movies and people you know just stick up in the house evening time come is like sh shaitan get loose instead of you come to the masjid you're gone lime in some way. Many people missing the salah. People don't care about their fasting. People don't care. And you see people walking up and down. As I'm calling, everybody is, is, is in their own zone. Some people you see <laughs> eating in Ramadan. I want to say, brother, you're supposed to be fasting. I'm sick. Oh, you're sick. I'm telling you, you know, you have people who have absolutely no reason to eat during Ramadan. They are not sick with anything. And they just get up in the morning and, and just feel the sick. You know, you got a feeling. I feel like I'm going to be well today, you know? I feel like I'm going to get a little cough. <clears throat> I feel like I'm going to get sick. You had a group that has had a feeling. So when you see them eating in, during the days of Ramadan and you say, well, how come you're not fasting? I sick. Many of those during that two years when things were a little, you know, strained with the masjid and you couldn't attend masjid, you will hear these people say, look at what the people do. They lock up the masjid like you used to go before. These are the ones who were running around back in. Oh, they look at me masjid. And, and I don't know what kind of imam we have there. Nah? Yeah, they only allow it five people. Oh, no, you want to go to mass. But when things was easy, you did not show that level of respect and honor for the month of Ramadan. What Allah did, he took it away from you to teach you a lesson. Every time we become ungrateful to Allah, and we do not show appreciation for a favor which he gives to you. Whether it is your health or your finances or your, your clothing or your, the gifts which he gives to you, your home or your, your, your wives or your children. Every favor, when you stop for a moment and think how much favors Allah has blessed you with. Take a, take a, a moment or two and just quickly in your minds Think about how much favors you are blessed with. You think him? Name five. And you drink tea? What is the last one he said? He could see. Oh, I thought he said he could drink tea. A C and T can arrive at. And those are favors which is confined to yourself. Listen that so. 
you could walk, you could speak. There are people who are born paralyzed. There are people who become paralyzed. There are people who are born blind. There are people who lose their sight. There are people who do not have the faculty of hearing. They are born deaf or they develop some air disease and they lose their hearing. But Alhamdulillah, in a few minutes you'll be running outside, playing rock climbing games, competing with one another, playing basketball and volleyball and cricket, marble pitch. We have that sport. You have marble pitch too. All these things, look at that. So the usage of your hand is a favor from Allah. Your sight is a favor from Allah. Your ability to taste is a favor from Allah. Your hearing is a favor from Allah. Your aql, your intelligence is a favor from Allah. Your ability to think is a favor from Allah. Your ability to walk is a favor from Allah. The way your organs function, in accordance, you know, your organs function in this systematic way, is a favor from Allah. There are certain glands in your body, if they overproduce, the chemical that they produce, your body goes off balanced. And you have to go by a specialist. You know that? If your heart beats too fast, so your heart must be in sequence with your brains and everything. If it pumps too much oxygen and blood to your brain, you get hyperactive. If your kidney slows down, or your liver function slows down, or an organ slows down, you have to go see a specialist, a doctor. But the way Allah created you is that every organ functions in a sequential manner. Nothing out, uh, outrides the other. Everything functions in a sequential manner. Do we thank Allah for that? On your person, how much favors Allah has blessed you with? And when the day comes to an end, do we thank Allah for that? I know they tell me 20 minutes, and I take more than 20 minutes, so I'll wrap up now. And this, dear brothers and uh, dear sisters, uh, dear brothers and sisters, gratitude is one of the greatest form of ibadah. Why is it an ibadah? Because Allah commands us in Quran, Commands Luqman alayhi salam and Allah, be grateful to Allah. So whatever Allah commands you, it becomes an ibadah for us. And when we fulfill a command of Allah, then Allah becomes very pleased with us. With us. What does Allah say? He says, if you are grateful to me, then I will increase for you. He will increase for you in every aspect of your life. In every way of your life. When we think increase, you know what's the only thing that comes to mind? Money. Don't shake your head. That topsy chat. Whenever we think about increase, the first thing that comes to our mind is money. Wait now, if I be thankful, I will give me more money. Okay then. Tell me not, look at me on a fairy tale journey, you know. Oh, I can get more pious. And oh, I can pray more. Who do you think you're talking to? Allah increases in everything for you. Our gratitude protects us from harm. When we show more appreciation for the things which Allah has blessed you with, it liberates your hearts and frees you from the constraints of life. It makes you a more humble person because you are that type of person who are always showing gratitude and always thanking this one and thanking that one. You mean, think about it. For those who have children, if you give your child a gift and you just take it and you say, Wee, yes, and you go up with it, how are you going to feel? Great, fantastic, elated. You're going to feel real happy. You know what you're going to say? But this fellow him say, thanks. If you bring a gift for somebody in the masjid and say, Brother, look, I buy this for I know you always wanted this. Not a kaya. Eh? I know you always wanted this. And he just take it and he say, Okay then. And he walk away. How will that make you feel? Nice and? 
Now let put thing, let's put things in perspective. Allah has blessed us with so much. And He continues to give you. And when we show a scant regard for being grateful to Allah, how does, what position you think you are in Allah's eyes? Do you think Allah thinks good about you? Do you think Allah will increase for you and look at you as a grateful servant or an ungrateful person? Look at this fella. I bless him with good health and he don't even thank me for his health. I bless him with a nice wife and yeah, well, he married now, so Salah not incumbent upon him anymore. You know when you now get married? You feel that, like, well, I'm married now and I fulfill half my deeds so I can miss my Salah. I ain't gonna pray for you any morning because it's my honeymoon night. Oh, really? Right? Grat gratitude liberates your hearts. It liberates your hearts and it makes you dependent on Allah. And when you show gratitude to Allah for the small things, it may not be something big. When you show gratitude for Allah in the small thing, things, then Allah will increase for you in the big things. May Allah Rabbul Azza bless, bless this gathering. May Allah helps you to have a productive night. Well, let's go until what? Tahajjud and pray tahajjud and everybody go home and they eat suhoor and then go home. And boy, and may Allah Rabbul Azza, you know, bless, um, bless this crowd, this audience. May Allah bless our coming here and may Allah also bless our departure and cause us to reach back safely to our respective places. Kuluka we had a sakrallahi wa lakum wa nisayir al-muslimin fa sakfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.